Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm getting ready, you guys, to create a little gnome with epoxy sculpt and some beads. And if that's something you're interested in, oh, <laughs> I'm also going to try and roll me a little thin layer. I haven't, oh, this isn't working. I haven't done this before with epoxy sculpt, but I would like to be able to put this on my gnome. Uh, and it's very sticky. I just combined the two part process of uh, epoxy sculpt is a brand name, but it's an epoxy clay that is going to harden in 24 hours into a solid, like concrete. Um, I thought I would try to roll it out and it's super sticky. So I think I'll do my best. I'm just going to try and cover my gnome. Now I've kind of squished it down to a size that I think is going to be fine for this project and just oop, and, it, and it's not sticking to my gnome for some reason that is weird very weird very very weird all right so I already tried to save us some time by doing that off camera but basically you take the two-part epoxy which is this and I'm using bronze and you combine them until there's no marbling, you know, and it becomes one solid color. I did wear gloves while I was doing that so that I, the chemical process isn't touching my skin. And then once it's mixed, you're okay to touch it. Um, you have an hour, about an hour of working time, and it, it becomes your adhesive and kind of like your grout all in one. I've been following, um, a couple of other mosaic artists on YouTube, um, Julie, both Julie's actually, Julie Mazzoni is the one that has, has made these little pins, I guess you'd call them, or she uses a wooden form to create her shape, and she's done some animals, such beautiful, beautiful work, but um, I've done a couple of these other gnomes. Let me just get this covered. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to give pressure and follow the shape and not make it too thin or too thick because I don't want to squish it down and then it comes over the edges. I, I did pull a few of my polymer clay tools. So I have my blade. I'm going to use that to kind of clean up the edges, but I think I've covered him. And I'm going to be adhering beads to the clay. So the clay becomes the adhesive. So I can kind of um, put it into the clay and it should stay put. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto blade and clean up these edges. That's been the part I didn't like the most about the other projects I did was that it just kind of squished over the sides. But this way I can also see how thick it is. And I'm look I'm thinking it's pretty good. It's a little thin in some areas. But let's just finish. I think this is going to be good. Um a little shaky cuz I'm nervous. This this the pressure of the timing of um let me go this side so I could see so that I only have one hour of working time. And listen, I'm a fast crafter, but I feel this pressure that I have to be ready. So I've already, I'll show you my tray in a minute. I've gathered my supplies. I've opened all of my containers. I put out all of the beads that I want to work with, decided my colors so that I don't have any decisions to make and I can just really get to work. All right. If you can see this, let me just gather up. Now this is extra and it will harden. There's nothing you can do to save this. So I've kind of made other little projects, but I might need some more. So I'll just keep it there. And I have this plastic bag out on my tile. I'm going to use a baby wipe to just wipe off your tools because it can leave a residue that will harden. Like it'll turn to a rock. <laughs> so... I'm also going to wipe my hands a little and get the get the epoxy off them. And then I'm going to double check my little guy. 
he's a little, you know, I think he looks good. I think I'm happy with how this is. It's all over. Here, I have a little part right here that I could trim. I could have done all of this off camera as well to save a little bit of uh, filming. But I, I always say, I like to see really, ooh, that's very thick there, but I'll push it into the center. Um, how people do exactly what they're doing, and mistakes and all. All right, that looks, oh, I just stabbed it with my nail. Now I have these nails, which I've been doing, and I don't know if I'm gonna keep them, but they need to be done again. Anywho, they're a little bit harder to work with, I've noticed, when you're doing crafting. Um, so what I want to do now is get this little outline. So these were from Hobby Lobby, these little gnomes. I'm going to come in a little bit. And I just printed it in the printer. I put the, put the gnome wood pieces, so these guys. I just put them on my printer, and I printed them out so that I could see the... Uh, you know how they wanted me to do it and I like that this is a little thicker here I can tell anywho so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use him as a guideline it's not all the way up to the tip and I'm just going to try to recreate this little gnome right here we know that his boots will be so I'm going to separate those and then he has a beard that comes down you know he has a hand here I would like to have this look a little more defined than the first one I did. So that being said, he has his beard. Attaches up there. His head is, his hat comes from here to here. And his nose, well let's just put that right on. I have this red tile. I'm going to put his nose on right away just to get it the shape going how I want it. And I have tweezers. I have a couple of polymer clay tools that I've pulled because this is sticky right now. I have like 30 minutes of stickiness. Then it's going to start to set up. But no, no, I have at least an hour or more. I'm going to push that into the clay. And that should be adhered. Let's put his little mouth on. No, no, no. First I have to. He's going to have a mustache. So let's go across here that's going to be his face and then his mustache is going to go out like this and I'm just drawing this based on the so this does not have to be exact it's just based on this little other picture um, I would like the two sides of the mustache to <clears throat> kind of look um, match you know this side's fatter and the other one I did with I didn't have this I just used what I had in my stash but I specifically went and bought beads to do him so I think this mustache looks a little I will just use that as my guideline the other hand is going to be here there's going to be a stripe across his shirt that I'm going to use a different color so I think I can get started I have this tool called the Crystal Katana, and it's what I'm going to use to pick up my beads, which are in this little, um, it's, it's actually for painting. It's like a painter's tray, and I'm going to start, I want to put his mouth in and his little face. So right here, he's going to have a lip and a little, uh, I'm going to try and come in so you can really see what I'm doing, a little like inside his mouth I have this little pink bead and I'm gonna keep it on the side with the hole in it I don't know I just kind of like that idea I'm pushing that in I don't want to lose it I want it to show and that's his mouth and his nose now I'm gonna start to add his little face but let me see something I think I want to make a line across for the hat. Let's do the hat first because it's super easy. I'm going to use my katana to pick up these crystals. And I'm just going to place them. You don't have to press too hard um, to get them to adhere. 
And these actually have little paper backs on them. I should probably take that off. Damn it, that was something I didn't consider. Because see how sticky it is already? But honestly, these could come off if the, if the paper backing comes off. Um, these nails. That I just want to get that off. The the gem could come off the piece if, if that, you know what I'm saying. You guys are smart. Oh. This was something I should have considered. And my nails are not making it easy to grab this. I'll come off. I'll go off camera. Sorry about that. Got them on there. This is the color for the hat that I'm going to use. It's a, I call them bugle beads. They're tube beads and they're glass. And I'm going to go and outline the hat first. And I'm just using the katana to pick it up. It's like a waxy um, tip. And it works pretty good. This was not an inexpensive tool. I believe I got it at Hobby Lobby. And it was like $25, $24. And I already had one in my stash. So you do not need to go out and get anything. Um, you can actually use a piece of wax on the end of a stick, you know. But if I want to do the, this type of work, it is good to have the tools that help you be able to do it quickly and efficiently. Now, I think I want to move, put that there. So I'm just moving it over. Um, like I said, if I push too hard, which I tend to do, I am not gentle. And those of you who have watched my channel know that I... Um, I'm hard on my tools, um, but the idea is to just get these as close together as I can and create the outline. I think that's going to look, it's going to, I've, I've, everyone I've done so far, I've changed the, the process. I've been going and learning as I go. The idea being that when I show you guys you can take what I have done and learn from it and save yourself a little trial and error. But that being said, there's always more than one way to do something. So if you find a better way to do, hopefully my head is not in the shot, a better way to do it, go for it. You know, um, this is just, and Julie actually uh, kind of starts the project in, in real time speed. But then she speeds it up, which is kind of awesome as well because you don't need to see in real time every bead getting laid. That didn't sound right. <laughs> um, so um, my videos are just there for you to actually see the whole process in real time. And I chat, and you guys get to know me along the way, and that's just how my channel has been. All right, I like how that looks. Already, I'm getting to see what uh, where I'm headed. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with. I think I'm going to put one more over here. I don't know if I have half a bead. Sometimes, and I've tried to cut these, you guys, and they are glass and they shatter. But sometimes you'll get lucky and in the tube there'll be a little piece of one like this one that I'm just going to stick right there. I mean, uh, all right. Now what I want to do for the face, I'm going to use my tweezers. But first, I think I'm going to use gray. I have these, they're silver, but I'm considering them gray. And I'm going to put um, the top of the beard outlined with this, like the part that attaches to his face. What I'm, what I'm hoping it will give me is the effect of gray and white. So in other words, the gray would be closest to his, it's the shadow is what I'm trying to say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I don't know what it's going to look like, but I kind of think it could be a look that I'm going for um, to get it to look shaded and to separate because if you look at this guy nothing is really separating the mustache from the beard and I didn't like the way that looked so this is my attempt to shade the piece in a way 
using these silver bugle beads um, and white because the white would be the highlighty part, you know. And also, I made these stick up. These are dimensional, like they're kind of stuck in on an angle. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to lay these flat. Maybe just the mustache I'm going to do. But I just think, I'm. Tr this is what I mean by I'm trying new things. So this is going to be gray. And just the tips are going to be white. And I don't know if that's going to look right or not. But it's, it's the idea I had and the um, design that I'm going to go with. Um, let me double check something. It looks a little squishy. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to put a couple up against his nose to start the mustache. But then I really want to put white. I think I'm going to put a bigger one here. This is a little stubbier than that one. I want them equal sizes. So I'm just going to find one that's the similar. Okay, so I'm starting that. Now the rest is going to be white for the mustache. Um, thinking I'm going to fill in the, hmm, the hairs wouldn't be going across, so that might be a mistake. I don't think I want to put this going across. I was thinking I would outline it, but I think it's going to be better to just set them going down. Hair grows down, right? So I'll just set them headed down. And if some hang off the edge, that's okay. I don't mind because this will harden. Like I said, it will harden into a solid. The, the beads aren't going anywhere. So let me just put that growing down. And then I guess I'll finish the beard because uh, I got to keep it moving, you guys. I can't. All right. Now, I don't. Oops. My hairband got stuck on the camera. I don't want to. I have to see where my mustache is. So my mustache is going to come right to there. So I need a little gray. Now, I'm also, if I need to, I will put a little round bead in these areas that I can't um, fit a big tube. So let's. Finished. Oops, I have two on here. So I've definitely thought this through. When I watch Christy Friesen create, I think she does it similarly. She gets an idea. She pulls her the beads she wants to use, her color scheme and format like that. And then she kind of just goes with an abstract design. Unless it's a turtle. You know, I made, where's my turtle? I made this turtle. It's a video that Christy has on her website. Um, so you can plan it out so that when you're in the process, you don't, you're not panicking and like, you know, I think I'm going to put white. See, that has, I have to go one more. I just want it to be symmetrical in a way. All right. So I think this is what I'm thinking is going to separate the beard from the mustache and we shall see. I'm going to put one here. And one here and see my mouth is fitting in there all right and then I'm gonna put white so let's go here goes the white and these are actually a little smaller than they're a little bit stubbier uh, I got most of these beads at I want to say I went to Joann's and I hadn't been there in a while and it was fun because, and they were actually 40% off. Um, got quite a few there. And I went to Hobby Lobby and Hobby Lobby had quite a few colors. So I was very excited about that as well because like I said, if I'm trying to shade things, I need variations of colors or, you know, things like that. So let me go to the tip of the mustache now. I want to make sure that I have the shape that I want. And I'm doing the best I can. Um, all right, I can do that. Keep them flowing in a hair-like way. Hopefully I'm in the shot and my head isn't because I'm super focused on what I'm doing. And I'm going to just try to fit these in here. 
in the shape of a mustache. That was two at a time, which I don't mind. But I want them to be touching. I shared in my uh, haul video that I, on the other ones, I used some uh, Perfect Pearls. So I'm trying to shape that. But I'm thinking it's giving the impression that I hoped for. I can see the separation of the mustache and the beard. Um, might need some little white beads, and I do have them, but I'm going to try to shove a... There we go. I think that looks good. Anywho, I don't like to add Perfect Pearls as much because I want the beads to do the blinging. That looks pretty good. I'm not, I'm not hating it. So let's continue the shape of the beard along the edge now with white. And I think I want to add his little hands after that. So, I mean, I could go off camera. It's just me doing the same picking up and putting down. I am creating the shape along the edge and then I'm going to fill in. This is new. I don't I didn't do it on this one. I just for some reason I felt like I wanted to outline things. I was looking at some applique. Uh I want to say they're applique brooches. So in other words, they're they're beading a piece of felt, but it's with a uh, <clears throat> a needle and thread literally sewing all the beads onto this piece of felt and it's gorgeous and it the style was kind of similar to this see that should probably be gray i think i'm going to start filling in like this anywho the if you look at them if you go to pinterest and just put in applique like brooch. See, I think I need gray over here to separate the, uh, I think I'll just put a gray one across here. Hmm. Nope. I'm going to put it here. Mixing these two is, is going to still be okay. I think, I don't know. Um, anywho, the brooches definitely had this kind of vibe of being outlined. Some of the beading work to me and it looked much neater to me as well um, so that's kind of where I'm headed I might turn this on its side because the beard could be um, curled around like I want it to you know we'll see I'm just gonna fit it in here and see I'm learning as I go about what my eye is gonna like as far as how I need to place these. Now Julie really is good at this and she's not explaining it as she goes like her reasoning for why where she places a bead and what color and what direction. So I'm kind of just see how did I have this? There was white. I'll put a gray. Hmm. I, I think I do want to put this up here to separate the mustache a little bit more but I'll put a white one over here and listen this is this is a piece of art that I am kind of winging so what I have now to fill in I have these little tiny seed beads I think I'm going to use my tweezers because I can actually turn that on its side and not show the hole which I think I want to do. I don't want it to be a bunch of holes. Oopsie. That's okay. Um, where else? I wanted a piece up there. I don't have gray, but I'm going to put this white up here just to fill that space. And this is a big one. I like this one. It's thick. And put this here. But that looks beardy to me. I'm happy with that. Let's do some face. So I have, again, these are rounds, which because I just didn't have bugle beads because I would have preferred to do it with um, the bugle beads. They fill in quicker, but they this was the only kind of peachy color. I was going to use a bronze or something, and see, I don't want the hole to show, so I kind of need to press it from a 
let's see, I'll turn it this way and see if I can get it to not show the hole. So I want the side of the bead to show. And I'm, this is just, you know, I'm going to go off camera and continue to do this. So I just discovered that when you're placing these rounds, you're, you should turn the piece so that your tweezers are to the side that you're, you know, not where other beads are, and you can lay it in there nicer. So if I was going the other direction, the tweezers uh, would bump into the previous bead, you know, so I wouldn't be able to get it to lay as flat and as nice. Just a little tidbit there. Um, I should have thought about putting something, um, having a smaller option to fill those little spaces. I have, um, I do have tiny little beads, but I don't think they're this peach color. <clears throat> um, I could just use um, bronze or something. Just, or just leave it. See, that's why I should probably get some Pam Pastels so that I have, I can color the, <clears throat> I'm just pushing it up a little. <clears throat> Hopefully my head's not in the way. <clears throat> it's a different look. I, I think Julie does all the same bead. So in other words, she, well, no, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, she definitely uses rounds too. I definitely remember her using rounds. And I don't mind the different, I, I love different texture, different color. So that's fine with me. It's just that um, this might be it. Now my hands. See how he has little fingertips? I kind of wanted to lay these in in a way that it would look like his little fingers. So I'm going to put two, three, four. And I don't think I'm going to be able to make it look like that because I don't have anything straight to fill it in with. You know what I'm saying? But these are his little fingers. His hands are here. And I can actually hold the bead. Like I, if I squeeze, I, oops, well, I just pulled it out. You have to let go. All right, now I'm going to try and let's just go around. Oopsie daisy. Maybe the stickiness is wearing off. I don't know how long I've been on here, but you know, the stickiness is part of the, I'm going to just put one here. Dang it. And then one below it. I mean, that kind of has a roundedness to it. It, it is what it is. Um, what was I going to do here? Let me think what I did. I put, so I only put three, I'm putting one here, going across, I'll put another one, and then I'll just fill in with one here and one here. And that's my hands. So we're moving along, guys. I mean, that's it. That's my hands. They don't really look like hands, and I could maybe fit. I might want to move that up, and I might fit one here. And if I could find a little skinny one to fit here, I think I want to do it. This is not showing up, my little pink one. So I'm gonna, I think I want to put a red one in there. I have a red one. And this is, and then I have another piece of clay because it looks like I need a little piece in there, a tiny little piece. And I'm going to drop it into this mouth area because it feels like I picked it out. But I do have a red bead that I'm going to put right in here. And I just think that's showing up better. Okay, so as for the, the, oop. I'm just making sure I push these down. As for the hat, we can go back to that and I'm going to start to use my katana again and just lay these in all along 
a hat. And if I, I have tiny little beads that can fill any holes, I think that's how I'm going to do it. And I'm not sure that I should be actually pushing down. They ha There's this little other end to the katana that I think is supposed to be used for that. But I've been using the, the actual um, tip, the um, waxy tip. And I don't think I should be. I don't know. If there's any katana experts out there, share with me. Oopsie. He kind of got pushed down. I want him to go right here. There we go. All right, so you get the idea. Um, I think I'm going to use a couple of gold. Where did they go? I have these gold ones for a buckle. And so I want to pull those. They're not out here. Um, or I have these little square beads. So I'm going to, I want to, I just thought of that. I don't have my buckle ready. And um, they're in here. So I'm going to go off camera. Um, I don't think I'm going to use that for my buckle. Um, I'm going to use these gold ones. I have these. I'm going to open this bag and put a couple of them out. Oopsie! For the buckle. I want to put a buckle on his boots. And I'm just going to put it like, kind of like right here two of them. I could put kind of like all the way down. I could put three of them. That looks kind of cool. Like it's laces or something. I don't know. For some reason I just really like the way that looked. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the rest with black for the boots. And then for the shirt I'm going to use the same color as the hat and some of these guys. So let me show you what these look like. I'm just going to go across this little, um, should I go up and down? Um, I kind of want to. I'm just going to put these across in a stripe. And I'm going to fill in the rest the same color as the hat. Alright, so I'll be right back. Right, a big change. I did not like the way the beard was half gray and half white. So I decided to change it. I decided to put just a line around the mustache. And now I'm going to just fill this whole thing in with white and see if I like it better. And what happens is the um, poxy sculpt does get squished down. You can see all those little, um, but that being said, I'm glad I changed it because I was not happy with the design and I do have time to switch it. So I'm just going to take all the rest of these white ones and I'm not using the ones that I had in there. I pushed them aside because I think they're a little contaminated in a way that I'm not sure that they'll be as sticky. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not used to this product yet. Not that they're contaminated, but what, oh, I know what it is. The katana can't pick them up as well because they have epoxy sculpt on them, I think. That's just an observation. It might not be true. So, but just this, this, in this moment right now, I already am glad I made that decision. I like it so much better. Um, I didn't like the way it looked like a half gray, half white beard. Not that some troll or troll, he's a gnome. And I put that sideways. I don't know that I love that. Like there's a couple sideways ones down there. But I have some rounds to fill it in with. Um, anywho, I was saying, um, half white, half gray. This is what my eye is telling me to do. Like I want to take this out because I think I'll be able to fit. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I just wanted to share that. I finished his shirt and See, 
me I can I force things and I shouldn't be I should be I'm gonna go down here I don't want to go across maybe I need a little more clay in that area like I did for the lip I'm just gonna kind of fill it to make it more level see how I the katana doesn't want to grab sometimes I think that's because I got a pox epoxy scoped I don't know listen it is what it is I think he's cute let me make sure I'm not squishing see what happens is you start squishing things off the edge well I do so I don't want to do that I'm just gonna make sure it's all fitting in there I lost a piece of face there's a piece of face in my hand <laughs> so I'm telling you though I've been unsure when I have finished a piece like any of these this these beads do not come off when I rub them like they are stuck on there let me fill in these other little couple little holes with some of these white uh, seed beads but I am glad this one looks really thin I think I'll be able to fit that right in here I like it better I I think you can see the separation a little better it's not what I pictured I have to be honest you know it's not as perfect I guess but it's progress not perfection Sarah <laughs> um, how many how many gnomes is it going to take before I get perfect I don't know um, but I just have the boots to do now so I mean his hands don't look you know I think he's cute I think it looks better than the other ones like you know I don't know can you see them I'm gonna do the boots as we chat I have black over here I'm gonna go down straight here to separate them maybe I'll go down around it like shape it let me see if I nope that's good right on right on the edge it's a little squished over here but I'll pull it off okay I haven't gotten down here yet to really squish anything let's see if I can fit a black right here because I can take I'll take off this third um, gold bead so that I can shape this boot nicely I don't want them to have pointy shoes And then I'm going to try and find like a little bit smaller one. And like I said, they're pretty good at keeping these all the same size. But sometimes you'll be able to find one that's a little smaller or it got broken or something. See, the katana doesn't want to pick it up. It's called a crystal katana. And I did get this at uh, Hobby Lobby. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to overlap that and make it look like that whatever let me just say um, because Christy had one and of course as crafters we always like to have what the what the teacher has and that being said I know that I can I've done this without having all the stuff but um, in this case I saw it I was getting beads and there it was and I thought I'm gonna grab it and it does work very nicely I will show you the other uh, brand name that I have I have another one that I've had in my stash for a long time and it works because I tried it and was wanted to see if I really needed to get the crystal katana and I don't believe I really needed needed it all right that's how the boot looks this is the other one it's called the it's by Marvy and it's called the Jewel Picker. Same premise. It has a piece of like a waxy plastic on the end and it works just fine. So um, basically that's it you guys. I think 
any other questions you might have just put them in the comments um, see I'd like to create a separation for the boot as well so that you know that it's like they're not connected but listen I can only do as much as I can do here right oh boy plus I'm pushing it off the edge don't want to push it off the edge just want to connect it I'll tell you what though I love the bling effect of this of these beads on here look at that that's what I'm gonna get when this is all stuck so let me whoop, a white one got up here don't want you there and then I'm gonna take off this other gold hopefully my head is not in the shot but that's it you guys I think I have tiny little black ones that I'll probably use to fill in any little blank spots just because I think I want to get as much bling for the bang for my buck you know I don't want to just show uh, epoxy sculpt showing through and that's why if I had some I think I would like I don't even know if they make a black pan pastel or you know what really would have helped if I would have used black epoxy sculpt because epoxy sculpt does come in see how it won't stick it comes in different colors um, and I just don't know why I didn't pick black I don't know to to use um, let's see don't want to do it like that let's start here and I'm gonna put these all the way up there we go and then I'm gonna put you all the way over um, so yeah, there are options when it comes to the color that would be showing through. As a matter of fact, black, I mean, black would make his beard show up better too because it would look like the shading underneath in a way, you know. So maybe I'll order some black. I don't know why I opted for bronze. I think I was thinking about making a lot of turtles and the tortoise's shell is brown, you know. So I thought I was going to be, oh, I'm struggling. I think the stickiness, it's probably been close to an hour. So I'm right on target. Now that being said, if you have a bigger project, you can mix up more as you go. So use it as you go. You don't need to put it all down at once. Um, I'm just pressing it in, but I think it looks good. I think he, I, looking at it on camera, I'm actually pretty happy. I have these little tiny black ones. Um, I'm probably going to put in, here I have this one. This guy, I can fill in right here. And I'm telling you, these will stick. When, when I come back to this tomorrow, and run my finger across it there nothing's going to fall off it's pretty magical in that way so there it is you guys there's my little gnome now let me go around and check my edges i think i could still trim it up if i wanted to i just have to be careful that i'm not pulling any beads off so yes i want to make sure that everything is on top and not squished off to the side and that just makes me happy I just don't like the look of the squishy clay outside the rim but obviously it's going to squish as I'm pushing so I guess cleaning up after is a good idea as well um, and that would be it that would be my little tutorial for you guys with epoxy sculpt and beads look yeah this this boot got kind of squishy so any questions oopsie don't want to pull off the bead or any information that you have would be awful nice to see if you've tried this before i'm going to put him back on there need a little more clay See, that's why I like to be live because I just cut this off and I don't want it to be cut off. So I'm going to put a little more clay 
right there and put that bead or a different bead right there and then I will cut off yeah I just that's just a personal preference of mine you know why I think it makes the work look neater as well like I don't want it to look like a a mess I want it to look neat like I think I put see this is just a mess and I can't cut that now but I put gold leafing on on the side of these to kind of cover it but I think I did pretty good with this one I am going to stop I'm pretty happy and all looks well there he is thanks for watching